Welcome, fellow castigators, to the Gas Mask Podcast. I am here with Micah, oh. and we are watching First Blood. The biggest blood. Caroline was supposed to be here, but she's lame. Lame and gay. Lame. Whoever oh, had these headphones on last had them tiny. Tiny head. Tiny. tiny head. Probably Lily. Yeah, it was probably Lily. Probably. And she wears them so aloof. Aloof. Mm. Little bikini. Mankini. As always, the movie started when the podcast did. So if you haven't started the movie, <laughs> back it up, baby. Yeah, you should see we... Rambo strutting along. His bag. Visual consultant Tom Noble. Big old hair. Big old hair. Big old mullet. I'm I'm really upset they didn't do the mullet for the last one, because he has the mullet in the f- in all of the other ones. Really. Even the fourth one, which was 2008. Okay. So I feel like they really. They really messed up on a key character trait. They're representing me on the big screen. I really appreciate that. The inclusion. <laughs> inclusion and diversity. People with mullets, they're just not represented enough. Mm. It's true, and I think I think that's because mullets just don't work for everyone. <laughs> no, they do not. They just really don't. Yeah. Uh. You gotta figure it out. Figure out your hairstyle. So David Morrell, who is the author of the original novel, First Blood, stated that he actually prefers the film over over his novel. Wow. Yeah. Mm. How's that for ringing endorsement? It's like, yep, you improved it. <laughs> this is pretty good. Yeah. That is kind of crazy. Yeah. And I'll, I'll give you a few book facts throughout, just a few little differences. Probably. See how they improved it, you know? It's probably just Sylvester Stallone. Stallone. That's what he liked. So the actress who plays this woman here is, even though this is a vital speaking role, she um, she is not credited in the movie. <laughs> and furthermore, nobody can figure out who she is. What? People have tried very hard to look through different production notes and and you know old documents and all kinds of things to try and figure out who she is, and she has never been identified. It's racist. <laughs> what? They denied that woman her credit. Maybe they, even the production at the time couldn't figure out who she was. <laughs> Agent Orange. What? Wait, is this in Vietnam? Or Vietnam War? Yes, this is post-Vietnam. Post-Vietnam. This is set in the year the movie was made, which is 82. So he's out looking for his old buddy who died by getting cancer from Agent Orange. She sounds all right. Yep. Get all that hair to keep himself warm. You don't need no hat. So Rambo is actually different from in the book. In the book, he's sort of he just completely snaps. He's this psychotic killer and I thought well we want to endear him to audiences and you know we want to help the view of veterans 
because that's what this movie is kind of about is is negative views of veterans that was going around at the time mm-hmm. uh, especially Vietnam War veterans they were kind of seen as lesser which was not right yeah so this movie and was so, trying to like humanize them and sympathize with them or the opposite of that yeah humanize him <laughs> basically make him a victim of circumstance a guy who comes home and he has nothing and so he's you know he's this homeless drifter and everyone treats him like like he's dirt but it's not his fault right and furthermore he should be getting help because yeah yeah Patriotism. <laughs> nice car. Yeah, old cars are stylish. Dang. Thirty miles. Many of the extras uh, were actual, just legit town folk, because there was a a nearby mill that had closed, and so there was just a whole litany of unemployed townsfolk who were (laughs) more than happy to be in the movie and get a little pay. So they were also drifters, (laughs) unemployed (laughs) drifters. Yeah, Yeah, pretty much. Well, I assume most of them had homes, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah kind of. It's hauling. <laughs> he just walks back into town. <laughs> yep. I do what I want. extreme yeah just a little (laughs) I'm just gonna risk my entire career for suspecting he's got no good intentions What do you mean? You use a knife. What? 
This guy is an I, idiot. Uh, yeah. An you idiot dress, with a power trip. You dress like all the animals with a knife. And if an animal's like attacking you, you can use the knife to stab the animal. This means an imbecile. See, it's funny they're making fun of him because later in the movie we see him him kill a wild boar. <laughs> Hunting. Like, yeah, of course you would need a knife that big to fight a boar. Of course you would. You don't need no knife in America. Come on, dude. Yeah. These officers are just wimpy guys. They're just so... I think this is probably just like the most un fair portrayal of a police person but mm. well, I mean I it does in, happen yeah it does happen I mean they're you know liberal, yeah, liberal officers police. on a power trip who mm. yeah they'll act like that especially in, in a small town situation where no one's really checking up on them Yeah, it can happen unfortunately you gotta get your phones out start streaming <laughs> um you see she... um actually um she's legal I was so big. You didn't have to take it off to read it. I'm not doing anything right. <laughs> this procedure is, uh, kind of scuff. <laughs> one of the the plot points that was cut out um, from the book was that this guy that's talking Teasel has contempt towards Rambo because he was a veteran of the Korean War mm. which was you know <laughs> pretty much forgotten by everyone Unlike the Vietnam War, which you know, was a big deal. Got some resentment there. Yeah. Which is a good point, but I think it still works without it, you know? Yeah. Because it still pushes the the narrative of him just being a ass to veterans like everyone else was. Gawking at this man's physique. <laughs> they're they're violating all of the things. <laughs> all of the things. Like every single thing. Why is there just like an open An open wall shower thing right there where they're working. <laughs> what? It is weirdly close to everything else, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 
it's not like enclosed so the water could just get I am confused I don't understand this part. I don't know why they're shaving him. Did that used to be policy? <laughs> I don't know. Grab and kill all of them. <laughs> I would definitely not take it easy. No, 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 no. They've like actually beaten him. Yeah, I would be suspicious that they'd just be <laughs> like, oh, whoops. Whoopsies, I killed you. <laughs> Just gouge out his eyes. <laughs> nice. Now this is so. Epic. There's a there's a scene that's that's cut out where they they whip him with the hose. <laughs> yeah, come on, and man. the director just kept asking for the take again and again and again and again. And there was a line before he got whipped, and he's like, "Okay, what's going on? The guy's saying the line perfectly. We don't need to keep whipping me with the hose." And he said, and the director was like, "Shut up and do it again." And so he pushed the director back, you know, just push him away. Like, what are you doing? Like, you punk. And then he got tackled by the security guys on set, and they cracked his rib. Who's Stallone? Yeah. Bro, so he's getting abused, like, behind the scenes and then on yeah. camera. This is hilarious. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Did you see that? No, what? He was driving away, and he got... A rifle and just shot at him with like people all around. Oh my gosh, brilliant! Th these these police officers, cream of the crop, right here. Oh my here. gosh, they're horrible. Uh, where's the body cams when you when you need them? Right. Body cams are a godsend. You can see all the <laughs> stupid, incompetent police that need yeah. to be weeded out. Technology is is a good thing. Yeah. Oh. I mean, like, those those security nice. guards, like, were way, way too jumpy. Like, they should have stepped up and, like, gotten between them. But you shouldn't be tackling the lead actor mm -hmm. and, like, <laughs> injuring him. Because that could ruin the movie. Like, what are you doing? Dummies. Like, they kind of were abusing him all around. Yeah. Like, did the production just hate Stallone? Like, why are you with him? They were like, screw this him. guy. Was this before he was he was anybody, right? He was just kind of... Uh, no. Um, Rocky was before this. So he actually oh, okay. was somebody at this point. Um, a Navy SEAL was actually brought in to show how to show Stallone how he should get away from the officers and how it's done probably. And the actors on set were really um, convinced that they could take him on if they all ganged up on him. But <laughs> just like held him down. Of course, this the SEAL took three of them down. Oh my gosh! It's like nope. Yeah, you know. It's pretty cute. And Stolen actually accidentally uh, broke the nose of the guy of the officer that he uh, elbows in the face on accident. 
Whoopsie. Which is funny because it specifies in the book that he breaks his nose. So they were accidentally very true to the book <laughs> during Destiny. that scene. Oh. Here you go. So that was actually a complete accident. They were not supposed to roll the car down, but they thought, hey, you know what? We'll cut, we'll have the actor get out of the car, and we'll work with it. What? Because he was supposed to get out of the car anyway, because of, of, like, the rocks. You can't, you know, keep driving. <laughs> the car so they're like, it. hey, it turned over. That kind of looked cool. Keep it. Nice. Yep. But he wasn't in the car when it rolled over. No, the stuntman was in there. Oh, the stuntman was in there. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, oh! Yeah, I mean, the extra context with the South Korean War would kind of make this more realistic for how, you know, like, enthuse or, I guess, resentment he has towards him. Because he's so... He's, like, so out to get him. It's just not normal. <laughs> it's too much effort. There should be backstory. But, whatever. Yeah, you gotta keep the pace, I guess. I guess. It doesn't make any sense. He's like, I'm gonna chase you. Why? Well, I, I mean, I just get, like, the idea that it's just a pride thing. I mean, later on, there's a lot more dialogue. Um, and yeah, it seems to just be something between pride and, you know, just a power trip thing. Like, Yeah, I guess. A lot of people are like that. Especially if they, you know, start getting high on the smell of their own authority. Mm-hmm. So this piece of canvas here was actually just a legitimate piece of canvas that he found on the ground. Really? And Sylvester Sloan was like, well, you know, he'd get cold out there, you know, he would put this on realistically. I mean, he was probably grasping for straws because he was cold out there. <laughs> if, yeah, we're being you know, real, if we're being realistic. I think that uh, for my character, he'd he definitely grabbed this thing and put it on. But it became, like, the most protected item on set because it was only one of it. Oh. So if anything happened to it, they were screwed. <laughs> oh, no. It's just a piece of canvas. Just try to make one somewhere. Hmm. I mean, I guess it would be kind of... I guess it's just a matter of, like, trying to find one that's right color and getting it shipped over to where you're filming. And yeah. Let's get that robe looking. I imagine today that would be a little bit easier, but back then that was probably yeah a lot to ask. That's pretty funny. If something happened to it, they'd probably have to add in a scene where it gets something happens to it. Oh yes, and he kept the canvas. So Esther Stolon has it in his house. <laughs> nice. Of course. It's wild. It, it, it goes to show you never know. It's a little little inspiration for you. One day you're just a rotting canvas mm -hmm. in the in the mud, just stuck in the ground, ready to just decompose and, you know, float away forever. But now you're a movie star. Just by being, you're a movie star. A movie prop star. And then you're, 
you know, on display in yeah. perpetuity. Give some, give some motivation. Or you never know what's gonna happen to you. It's crazy. So while shooting on this mossy cliff, uh, Stallone was concerned that he would slip and fall over. It's as reasonable. one would. And they were like, well, well, we'll tie a rope around your ankle so that we can retrieve the body. <laughs> so basically, they gave him no assurances. Dude. They just said, well, if you die... We can at least get we'll you retrieve back. You, retrieve your body. Why wouldn't they be like, oh, we're going to tie a rope around you to make sure you don't fall all the way down? Yeah, and he said he, said he uh, they, they tied the rope to his ankle, and he looked back, and everyone on the crew was, was tied to a tree. <laughs> tied to a tree? So they were all worried about it, but they were like, okay, go out there. Go ahead. Oh Climb my around. Gosh. Good luck. Don't die. Jeez. That is. Didn't they have like rock climbing and whatever with all the lines and the ropes and stuff back then? They had to have. You know? Yeah. Where you anchor things and it's zip lining. Wait, no, it's not zip lining. Yeah. I mean, um. I it it's rock climbing, I guess. Right. I mean, most of this is faked, obviously. You know, he's he didn't climb all the way down himself, but. I just feel like. There's some dangerously <laughs> real shots. You could do When some... he's at the top and leaning over and finding his footing down. You could do a little bit more than just. We're gonna tie a rope around your ankle. I guess they weren't properly prepared for it. I don't know. Just sniping him. I really hate this guy. I mean, having this helicopter in such a skinny area is pretty, pretty dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want him to do? <laughs> it's like, sir, I can't stay still. In I would this tip him over. I would be like, this guy has been a scourge on the police whoops. department for years. Yeah, he is going over the edge. Just oh, a little no. whoop. Oh no! Drop that old bastard, Phil. We. So the scene where he falls through the trees, even though you can't see it very well, was an actual stunt that Stallone did. Mm. And right there, he broke his rib. Oh. Again. Another rib or the same rib? Another one. <laughs> yeah. Dude, he's just... He's just losing ribs on Rambo yeah, he's, actively. He's getting in the role right there. And they were like, do it they were like, we want you to do it a third time. And he's like, no, that was real. <laughs> <laughs> like that's as real a shot as you're gonna get. Yep. That's all you get. Dang. Well, I'll be impressed if he makes this. Oh, dang. Pilot's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't responsible for that. I can leave now. Oops. Goodbye. Yes, I'm leaving. Good riddance. <laughs> yes, loot him. Loot the body.
His head would be a little more smushed than that, but they did okay. Yeah. Be a little smishy, smishy, wishy, mm. smishy, smishy. Remember, we gotta survive the home front. No, he's dead. I can't believe it. Was that fish line? Or a fish hook mm. in the... Yeah. Fish line. Nice. That's not what you should be doing, I don't think. I think the first thing you should do is, like, put a lot of pressure and gauze in it, right? To stop it from bleeding. Yeah, yeah. Not just sew it up, because isn't it just going to bleed on the inside? Yep, it's true. Gotta let it clog. Yeah, so uh, don't do that. I clipped him in the head. One of them is a good shot. <laughs> you got a crack shot among them. Oh, dude, that reminds me. Uh, did Tommy or Jensen tell you about the challenge we did while we were out shooting? Mm -mm. So we had one of those tiny, uh, like, Jack Daniels tasters that's, like, a little smaller than those bottles of syrup from... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the w place that old people like to go. Cracker Barrel. Oh, yeah. It's about that size, so real tiny. And then we took that Jensen's pistol that has that f ridiculous foot-long barrel. So when you when you hold it, it's like, I mean, it's like wiggling all over the place because it's, it's front heavy. And so we were trying to shoot a tiny bottle with this stupid revolver that felt so dumb and unwieldy in your hands. Oh my gosh. How far From away was it? pretty far. Um, maybe like three yards or so. Where we nor the distance we normally shoot from, more or less. Uh, yeah. So we somebody... went through. Who shot? I mean, it? we went. Uh, Tommy Jensen and I. We would load it up, and then we would pass it along each other. So who actually hit the thing? We all did, eventually. Oh okay. Uh, Jensen, Tommy hit it twice. I showed up while they were doing it, so I didn't get as many shots. I only hit it once. Mm. Maybe twice. There was one time. Where I knocked, where I knocked it over, but Jensen claims that it was because I hit the thing next to it and it knocked it over. But I'm not, uh, I'm not confident about that. I don't know. But yeah, it was pretty hard. But good, good training, good way to train to be yeah. to be steady and accurate. <laughs> With the wonkiest gun. With the wonkiest gun and the tiniest target, it was pretty ridiculous. You gotta become Rambo. <laughs> gotta be Rambo. We must be Rambo. We must be Rambo. Yeah, get that gigantic cartoon knife. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Uh, Sylvester Stallone actually chose the knife maker personally. Just some, just some random like small town knife maker in Arkansas that he was impressed with. And I don't know how he knew about him. I guess just because Stallone's enough of a man that it was just, yeah, you know, something he came across. Wow, so he picked out the knife and, and... Well, he asked him to 
basically invent this knife. Oh. So the goal was to make kind of the the most reliable knife for extreme survival situations, being long enough and sharp enough to slice food, food or cut wood, um, waterproof, uh, being able to pl to hold little necessities like matches, medicine, string, mm -hmm. and then alternative blade with, with saw teeth for, I mean, defense if that's, you know, the side you want to choose. Some people go for that. Yeah, Some people saws. prefer it. And then, or, you know, to cut, cut, cut stuff for shelter. And... It actually popularized like cheap knockoff survival knives. Yeah. Having like a hollowed out handle. Mm hmm Unfortunately um, they're like very very cheap and not with good. like <laughs> with like a with like a compass in the, the pommel and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're usually pretty cheap. Yeah, it's a cool design if you get one that's like not it's like higher quality. But it is pretty big. Yeah, they made six different ones, and S Stallone, you know, definitely put a lot of work into them and, and tested them out. And so, you know, based on the use, they like updated it throughout the movies mm -hmm. to try and improve it. So by the time they got to the third one, it was like. You know, the ultimate perfect, perfect knife. Perfect, knife. perfect big ass knife. <laughs> perfect big knife. So, did they shoot the dog uh, guy? Yes. <laughs> That's kind of funny. And then the dog got, like, killed by a trap or something. I think. Pretty sure that knife is too big to like legally be carried anywhere. Isn't that true? Because we have like gay laws about that. Well, I'm pretty sure you can carry as long a knife or sword as you want. It's just that you can't wield it around. Unless I'm assuming you're using it for something that's not illegal. Like if you're cutting up wood or something. Mm. I'm. I think that's. Because I asked, I think I asked Tommy about that. Because yeah, and I, he said I was talking what I about said. it too, and I was like, "Can I have a big, you know, you know, carry a, a K bar?" Yeah. And he was, he was like, "Well, you can't conceal it." I'm like, "Well, okay, that's fine. It would be in the holster <laughs> on my side anyway." Right. And then later on, he was like, "Well, you can't carry that at all in this state. This state. This." I'm like, "What? <laughs> what? What are you talking about?" Like, this yeah. is America. I can't just carry a knife. The, like, this is a military knife. With Tommy, I think it's best just to double check. Because he remembers things that never were and some things that were, like, the law ten years ago. And then some things right. are current. So it's like a mixed bag. But he says it with such assurance that it's the right, right? answer. Yeah, he always... He's always... He talks with such certainty. <laughs> he's like, I... Ah, that's definitely it. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, okay. So you always okay. believe him. Yeah. It's true. With me, I'm just like, eh, it could be wrong. Check it yourself. <laughs> oh, he got stabbed. Ooh, he was in the shot the whole time. Yeah, because, I mean, I know, I know the, like, laws get, like, more and more like oppressive and less free but at the same time I still feel like you should be able you should be allowed to carry any size knife yeah I think so as long as it's not concealed cause like you can carry you can carry a, a rifle around like with you wherever you want it's well in public places or whatever outside 
no, outside. I'm sure there yeah. are people who won't let you in places, but well, <laughs> but I mean, outside, yeah. Like as long as you're not, if you're, if it's like slung over or like not in a ready position, and you're not flagging anybody, being irresponsible with it, you can walk basically anywhere with it. Mm. Like that, you've seen the demonstrations where you know there's like 50 people fully armed and geared up and they're just walking around demonstrating, you know, we have the right to bear arms. Right. Um, and they don't get arrested. Mm. It's because it's legal. It's just the concealing and taking it and hiding it and sneaking around that they're yeah, like, be, oh, that's, you know, It would know, be criminal. weird if you could have a rifle on your back and not a... Knife. Not a knife. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. That would be weird. But laws are stupid like that sometimes, so... But I think we should probably look it up but i think that you can as long as you as long as people can see it you can carry a freaking sword mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know if it's in its sheath or whatever yeah type of deal not swinging around i remember being so disappointed because i saw a guy uh a friend of jordan's got gifted a a sword cane like mm. a vintage sword cane i'm like that's the coolest i want that and he's like, yeah, you technically can't take that anywhere. You can't take that outside. I was like, what? What is the point? What? What is the concealed? point? Because, yeah, it's concealed. And it's too long. It's over, I think it's like three inches. Like, oh my gosh. Like, I understand the reason for the law, but... Oh my gosh. I feel like there should be exceptions for cool things like sword games. <laughs> yeah. Maybe to... that's not justice. I don't know, no, but it's what I feel is right. You need a concealed carry for sword canes. Scramble is just yeah. I wonder if you could get like a permit to carry it. Like I feel like if you had a concealed carry permit, that would carry over two knives. Does it? Because it's a weapon. I don't know if it does. I'm assuming. I mean, that's logical, but... Because, like, a rifle and a pistol are different weapon type of weapons. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. A knife is a different type of weapon. Yeah. That's true. That's what I think. But <laughs> they're just <laughs> meta -backing. They're like, oh, my gosh. All of them are dying. Actually, the guy who falls out of the, the helicopter, spoiler alert, is the only person who dies in this movie. <laughs> Which is great. All all this action, all this badassery, but Rambo's holding back. Yeah, he's like, I'm not going to kill these people. They're jerks, but they're police. You can't kill these people. How many times has he had to talk to you about this? Like, this guy's got a problem. I think he should be fired. Yes. Put him in front of the board. Like, what in the world? Mr. Rambo. The media, ladies and gentlemen. Every time. It's pretty lore accurate. Yep. Lester. A little harder than these guys. I think Dave knows what's going on. <laughs> Have you? Mm. Have you? Mm. You're the one who wouldn't let a guy eat in your town <laughs> for existing. 
Rainbow's daddy. I love the way he talks. <laughs> Sounds like an advertisement. Right? Um, I'm actually... He's a piggy. He's a piggy. So this is Stallone actually wanted to do that in uh, like one shot, like actually fight the hog. Like a real hog? Yeah. And they were like, no, we we don't want you to get hurt. <laughs> like kill but the hog like, or just... do it. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to kill it on Dude. camera. Dude. That would have been pretty cool. True enough. I like the enthusiasm. He's like, I'm going to do it every <laughs> Dude, he's building an entire shelter. What the heck is going on? This is the, uh, the the only Rambo movie where he doesn't use a bow and arrow at some point. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough. He don't got time to make a bow and arrow. <laughs> it's true. You know how, how much time that takes? It takes like, wow. <laughs> well, you can maybe fashion one. There's actually a cut scene where he stares into the fire and has a flashback to the time he 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 banged a Vietnam whore. <laughs> and it, it's completely pointless. Oh my! Like I don't know why they filmed it. I mean, <sighs> like it just. I mean, just I guess remembering he's, old times. He's just re reminiscing. He's like, remember <laughs> back in the day, a year ago. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. So they actually recorded that, and yeah, they just cut it. They're like, yeah. I'll show it to you afterwards. I sure. I guess I can look at that. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll be fun. Bang! I think it's just weird. Like, 
bang to be a dino. Like, it, like it's so understandable why it was cut because it's so pointless. So it's shocking that it didn't get cut from the script and got as far as being filmed. <laughs> like, I would have been like, why do we need to do this? This is extra money. I think they just wanted to film it for <laughs> other for, reasons. For us, uh, uh, science. Yeah. For science. Like, yeah, we got For the uh, artistry. We, we got to record this one. Yeah, we, we got to do a little, you know. Let's get an Asian girl in here. Take her top <laughs> off. Let's go. Well, it'll improve the movie, I promise. Oh yeah. Or just, <laughs> I just imagine they were out there in the woods for like months, just suffering. And they're like, mm, we need. I think we. I think we actually need to do the sex scene. <laughs> we need scene. a reprieve here. Get a bunch of Asian <laughs> whores in here, and you know. Was it multiple? or Was it just one? Or they had to select. They were like, eh, which one well, would be the best? There was just one with Rambo, but like in like the bar and stuff, there's like oh, yeah. multiple girls. So, yeah. yeah, it was you know fun day on set, probably a little respite. I would imagine. With his two broken ribs. <laughs> yeah, he got to just lie there and enjoy it a little bit. Yeah. Wambo. So the name of uh, Rambo's team that he was listening through the radio are all just names of crew members. Hmm. Like Westmore is the makeup artist, Michael Westmore. Bronson is the costumer, Tom Bronson, etc., etc. That's an interesting way of putting it. You idiot! Oh. You imbecile! He basically says through the through the talkie, hey, "They drew first blood. I don't want to do this. I don't want to, you know." They're like, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna go after. We're him. gonna send the army in and kill him." He's ready to surrender, but you know, let's. You know, I just watched the, um, it was like a gun documentary on why the M16 in Vietnam was so booty, like the first supplies of the M16, and it was like super government incompetence, but also kind of malicious things, and like greed. What? Malicious? Like, it was like super- They knew. Yeah, they- they basically chose one thing over the other because it bottom line for their investments and the way they would get money would benefit them, but it would be worse for the gun. 
And so they did that for years, years and years and years and years. And it cost a lot of Vietnam soldiers their lives because the gun would jam. That was just keyed. What is a key doing? (laughs) But yeah, uh, Wendigoon, he did that. Mm. Would recommend. It's pretty good. Interesting. Yeah, I forget which three-letter agency is, but that's one of them. That's just lame. Yeah. Pretty bad. That ain't right. It's not good. Yeah, just jog my memory, because they're running around with that gun, and it's Vietnam. So (laughs) I was like, oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. So, minus Lieutenant Clinton Morgan, all of the National Guardsmen are referred to as the actors' names. So they're like, you know what, instead of the confusing, trying to name them all or having the confusing job of guard one, guard two, guard three, you know, like... Yeah. Just just their names. Mike is Mike. Tom is Tom. (laughs) He's just playing dead. He's like, oh, I got shot. (laughs) Very courageous. (laughs) three zero seconds Got a rocket launcher. There's a bug in here. It's a bug. It's a bug. <laughs> Dang. Oh my. Tommy with a rocket launcher. Dang. I'm so excited. Hey, if I were permitted to fire a rocket launcher, I would be pretty hyped. I'd be like, yeah. Like legally just firing a rocket launcher. Without any, well, I guess they would have permits, maybe, I don't know. There's a booger over there. It burned out the forest. They had a, a rule while they were out there where no one, no one could go more than 50 feet away from the crew because all the woods looked exactly the same. And people would get lost super easily. Oh my goodness, yeah. And that's why they gave uh, all the police officers white hats. <laughs> they could keep track of them. Fair enough. They're taking pictures. That's what the military does. They conquer, and then they take a picture on the rubble. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. I don't see no problem with that. (laughs) 
poor kid. <laughs> I mean, he did rock and launch through the the cave. Yeah, but you would too. If you uh, could. Uh, yeah, I would. I would definitely do that. Or reap the reap the uh, consequences of my actions. Yeah, I'm not sure that cop would have the authority to make the National Guard clean it up. Yeah, dig dig him out. Like that's kind of what that's kind of ridiculous. I mean, if it's a military operation to clean out or to like excavate, I guess maybe, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Did he kill that guy? I'd say it's self defense. He kind of fell. I mean, he literally, he wasn't armed. He wasn't, like, a threat, and the police were shooting at him. So, that's outside their purview of uh, <laughs> police work. So, he's self, he's, you know, it's self-defense, basically. Yeah. Just because it's a police officer. Yeah, because the police can break the law, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. He would definitely win in the... Uh, the court case, but also the witnesses, only other witnesses would be the police, and the police are kind of scuffed right here. Mm. So... Of course, the helicopter guy, he could be a key witness. And he didn't like that guy. Mm. So he could counter the other guys. True. I don't know. Well, they probably know that. The police are probably just lying and choosing to. That's how they seem to be rolling, generally. <laughs> Not seem to be upholding the, the actual law anymore. Oh, yeah, he broke the law by vagrancy. What was he doing? Uh, he walked down the street, sir. <laughs> he was trying to eat at a diner. He's trying to boost the economy. Oh, my God. You can't have that. Imagine was he, he loitering? No. Was he trespassing? No. <laughs> he looked a bit off. Oh, and he wasn't just being the local homeless bum? He was vi here visiting someone? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Vagrancy is a stretch. Maybe a little bit. It was actually a rough cut of the movie that was about three hours long. Ooh. And Sylvester Stallone and his agents uh, said that that the film was so bad that it made them made them sick. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> end of my career kind of thing. What the heck did they cut? And uh, just you know, a lot of fighting, survival stuff. And it just, I mean, obviously the pacing was terrible being twice as long as it is, but cut it down to 93 minutes, became a hit, but they didn't think it was going to be. Hmm. 
These rats are vicious. And he said the rats were really, really calm and friendly until they hit the cold water, and then they were just nuts. <laughs> I would probably be he had to cool. go to the hospital for tetanus shots. What? Mm-hmm. So he actually got bit as well. Mm-hmm. Uh. Dude. And, uh... There was someone on set who was supposed to be making sure there was no animal abuse, but he couldn't really do anything about it. And so while they were filming, there were rats that got squeezed, thrown against a wall, <laughs> burned by the... You know, torch he was holding. Not that he was trying to, but, you know, these things happen. That's hilarious. Especially when you're, you know, covered in rats who are trying to bite you. Yeah. Don't, don't hurt the little rat. Don't do it. But she decided that she, um, you know, didn't do anything about it because she didn't want to be asked to leave the set. And the rats technically belonged to the production company instead of a third party as animals usually are hmm. so she could, she could just watch just as like the rats were burning she was like ah yes so she uh, she wrote to the, the Canadian Council of Animal Care and said oh something must be done about this and they were like well best we can do is wait until the movie is released and Point out that this is what you don't do. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, you guys are useful. That's pretty funny. I mean, I'm not saying something should be done about it. It's just... It's funny that you have a person on set who's paid to do nothing and be useless. And it's only gotten worse than s since then. It's just... Movie productions have so much bloat. So many people who are just useless. It's a big problem. You get these, you know, $300 Marvel movies, and then does that budget show on screen? Nope. No. No. It's booty. Because they got like 40 million people working on it. Yeah. And then the people at the top are all getting overpaid and they don't care because they don't own the company and so it's basically money laundering mm -hmm. I hate it so much because back back when uh, you know Rambo was made movie making was like a normal job and you got paid like normal normal wages <laughs> and it wasn't like super crazy And you get job security like any other job just by, you know, being good at your job. And they'd be like, eh, well, you know. And you'd, you'd stay with a studio or... And just work as a crew member or... Hey, you found a way out. People would hire... Hire you if you liked you, that kind of thing. Yeah. And and the reason that the, the only reason that it gave, they got paid you know slightly more than the usual job was just because there there is that there is the knowingness that you know you you might not have an immediate job set up afterwards and you mm -hmm. might have a little bit of time I but now it's it's ballooned into this thing where it's like every movie I have to increase my pay to the point where mm -hmm. you know I have to get paid half the movie's budget. By the time I've you know oh been around a while, so it's just absurd. People. Um, I think they should get royalties. I think that should be a big part of their paycheck. Like they should have just like average wage to be actors, and they then they should have do. royalties. That's the funny thing. They actually have so those they have as well. upfront fat stacks of cash, and then royalties. and then they still get something for the rest of their lives. Yeah, it's absurd. That's that's, that's why the strikes were so annoying because you get whiny actors who are like, "Oh, I only got, I only got like you know, fifty fifty dollars, you know, a year or like you know, not fifty, 
don't know why I said that. But, like, I only got, like, 150, you know, every couple months for this job. And it was like, dude, that was, like, a side character you played in one one episode of a TV show in 2008. And you're still <laughs> getting paid every year for it. Like, what the hell are you whining about? Yeah. Get to work, loser. Just like, do you, you stupid idiot. Like, yeah. you can make good money as a side actor. Just, like, you could do five years of television, being become absolutely no one worth speaking of, and then just retire. Yeah. Just get royalties out of it. But then, but they're stupid. They stay in California where it's, you know, too expensive to live. And, you yeah, know, people bad. don't spend money smartly as is, so they're always sitting around in there. LA apartment complaining and it's like dude save up your money and go to Wyoming or something you know get it buy a house like idiots I don't I, know how to I, use your I'm money just, I'm so annoyed like just incompetence like, you get paid so well don't don't be a turd no they're being a turd it's their job and they just, they get what they want every time. <laughs> like little babies. Little adult children. Pretty much. Wee! It's annoying. Dude. Movie making used to be such a serious business where people were just, you know. Like, of course it was, it, it's it's an art form, so there's always kind of that uneven ground, right? Mm-hmm. But there used to be people who were just, you know there to work hard and do it like any other job now now these days everyone wants to be pampered yeah and i mean those people still exist i think that's why movies are having uh picking up success in georgia because you get like normal southern people who are hard workers and so you get like good crew members mm. even if your creators are you know morons <laughs> absolute idiots Dang. Everybody in California just wants to be pampered. Yeah, they need to go find something better to do with their time. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying oh there's not gosh. improvements to be made in the movie making business. You know, I'm not gonna say there aren't people getting screwed over, especially, you know, these days, especially in Hollywood, where it's just. AIDS. I mean, people are obviously making mo movies to money launder. That hurts a lot of people. Uh, but still, it's just a lot of their demands are ridiculous. Especially oh from God. actors and writers. Oh no, the crossfire. And it's like, you get more than you deserve for writing the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. When, you know, there's some crew member working... 14 hour shifts carrying heavy equipment around who's making 850 an hour you know like like shut up stop complaining yeah it's like where where are the reforms in the industry where do they really need to be do we really need to pay creatives and actors more no not really <laughs> definitely not how about the people who... Oh my gosh, that is a big gun. Put their... Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's actually um, a M60 machine gun, and it weighs 30 pounds, not, ca not counting the ammo belt. Jeez. Why so you he... can imagine running around with that thing. That's Yikes. crazy. Why did he blow it up? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why did he blow up that poor gas station? Distraction. He's right. gonna set himself up somewhere. Okay, I feel like that was a little bit over overkill. Really? Just a little bit. That explosion probably annoyed people. This this was filmed in the town of Hope, British Columbia. So, 
up there in Canada. Canada. And so, for ease, they just made the, the name of the town in the movie Hope as well. Okay. Although, of course, it's an American town Fair enough. in the narrative. I guess it was a pretty good distraction. Yep. So Esther Sloan was actually out um, at a bar on this street, and a girl pretended to be a fan of his in order to get free free drinks out of him. And then she was, you know, uninterested. She dropped the act. <laughs> and so he... he uh, he made it a scene in one of the Rocky movies. I guess he was like, wow, people are terrible. Of him being a fan? Wait, why would... She recognized him from, like, posters or something and then just pretended to be a fan of him. So she pretended to be a fan of him, but then he's giving her drinks? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I guess... The I'm presumption the is that he's around. the successful one. But yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Oh, People are weird. Women be like, um, <laughs> I'm deceitful. <laughs> because one commodity. Yep. And Rocky was like, this is just bitch. <laughs> he was like, I'm going to put you in the movie, you awful person. <laughs> deceitful. I just love how he's running around the town with that gun <laughs> he's just like doo -doo -doo. god he's so hard to carry the trees <laughs> I love it. It, it, this is this is a police officer and a green beret. Like, they should have oodles of respect for each other. It just absolutely does not. No, they're throwing mad shade. It's ridiculous. But, I mean, I guess they were, They have been interacting for the past few days and not getting along. So. Yeah, but it's weird that he's like a veteran who's been through hell. And he's like, oh, where do you people come from? <laughs> he's like, very... What? Very indignant and like, screw you, man. Like I serve this country so that, you know, you can serve locally. You've had like you know three robberies in the last five years. I've been in the trenches, man. Like, where do you people come from? I hate you. <laughs> like why don't you? Where do I come from? Why don't you go back in your box? Suck your thumb and watch some TV. <laughs> Turd. He's checking the attic. He's like, he might be up here. I don't know. Oh, that was the roof. Yep. Yeah. Oh, spooky. So, is this is the rest of the Rambo's depicting be what happened in Vietnam? I don't know. Have you not watched the rest of them? Mm -mm. Oh yeah, I've funny. I've only seen this one. Hmm. I'm just wondering, like. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I was when I was testing the discs, I was just sort of flipping through the chapters, and the second one. It looks like Vietnam. So either it's a prequel or he has to go back there for some reason. I gotta go back to Vietnam. And the third one I'm pretty sure is in Afghanistan. Afghanistan? Yeah. What? I think they start sending him on missions. Start using the guy. I feel like it would be a 
prequel, but then it would be confusing. Yeah, which it, which is a weird choice because this guy's obviously got a lot of PTSD. I don't think I don't think you should ever go back out there. Yeah, probably not. Like I understand because you know action movie franchise and and money, but from a narrative standpoint, it's like <laughs> no. He needs therapy. He needs to <laughs> go home. He needs to have a home. He needs to have his. He needs to microdose on mushrooms. Government help him out. You know, actually give him some money. Oh my gosh, what are you doing? making bombs or something kind of <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh he's like I know I will make more explosions <laughs> destroy this poor man's business uh. He just shoots it. Kaboom! It's like fireworks. Yeah, if I was the owner of that shop, I would just, I would never leave the police alone. You know, like, as soon as I I found out it was self-defense, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna gonna sue you (laughs) for every single penny you have. How dare you chase a man into my gun shop? (laughs) Desperations on your hands. The outpost is being exploded. Oh my goodness. Jesus. Blasting. Police station's not gonna have any money for the people who sue them. No, probably not. I mean, if you sue the police, wouldn't it just come out of your bank account because you're paying taxes? Theoretically. I honestly don't know. I mean, more than anything, you would just be pressing charges against a particular officer. <laughs> Everybody sues that guy, the sheriff. Yeah, everyone sues the sheriff. I sued the sheriff, <laughs> but I did not sue the deputy. I sued the sheriff. He could sell his organs. Take some organs out of him. Yeah, he doesn't need those. No. You don't need a couple of your organs. You could survive with a couple less organs. Your quality of life will go down, but... uh, So is everybody else's, since you crossed the wrong man. Oh dang! No, he just got zero. so Brian Dennehy insisted on doing his own stunt of falling through the ceiling, and he shattered a bunch of his ribs doing it. I mean, that's just that just makes sense. <laughs> Sorry, Cora. This movie's just full of shattered ribs. Yeah. Everybody shattered their ribs on this movie. Fun fact, everyone shattered their ribs in this movie. No rib was spared. No rib was spared. Not even the spare ribs.
Is Aaron gonna take him? That story was true, by the way. The writer heard it from a real veteran. Whoa. Yeah. The studio was very hesitant to have that, that scene in there. But they were like, yeah, but this is what the movie's about. You see? Yeah. You're trying to push us back. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> like, like, no. This is, the, this is the thing. You can't be that person. I'm done now. This is just a a big uh, therapy session. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Went a little overboard, but, you know, I worked through the problems. You're sweaty. 
Cars made one through six. Man on the street. <laughs> three. One, two, three. Mm-hmm. Woman on the street. Mm-hmm. Which street we will never Buddy know? Buddy Joe Hooker. What a name. Oh my gosh. So this movie and Rocky Three were released the same year. With uh, Rocky in May and this in October. Uh, oh. And uh, later on in 1985, <laughs> Rocky IV came out and Rainbow 2 did as well. <laughs> what? So there are two different years in the 80s where you got. Rocky sequels and and Rambo. Oh my gosh! At the at off? the same time, Stallone was just the just the guy. He was a beast. The guy. That was pretty good. He and Schwarzenegger, the reigning champs yeah. of action movies. That was pretty good movie. I was like kind of confused on what was gonna happen. And then, <laughs> yeah, this, because I was like, oh, he's going to be, like, in Vietnam or something. Yeah, I like the simplicity. It's, I think it's more effective that way. Yeah. Like, here's Rambo. He's suffering. And that's the movie. <laughs> here's a soldier <laughs> going through all of the trauma. He, he comes home, and everyone's terrible to him. Getting... Spat on. Yeah. And this came out. It's kind of the uh, same year as the Vietnam War ended. You said. No, no, no. I was saying that the movie was set in the same year that it was released in 1982. So a few years after. Oh, okay. Um. Well, that's good. But yeah, he's. Uh, so a lot of people are like, oh. <laughs> Maybe oh, the guy's name is Jimmy on. Lyle. I had it written as Jimmy Life. Jimmy Whoops. Life. Jimmy Lyle is the knife maker, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. Ugh. A blacksmith. A knife smith. Mm. The persons and events in this film uh, are fic- fictitious. Fic- it's fictitious. kind of... Fictitious. Kind of sad that the movie's still relevant. Like, especially that line in there where he talks about people people protesting. And protesting the war at, like, the airport and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's that's unfortunately still, still so contemporary. Because you got those, you know, lib- you know, all those libtards who do exactly that. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, you want weapons to fight the military, but also you still want to support the military? Are you an idiot? It's like, no, that's just the dichotomy of life. Like, I think everybody should come be on. armed with the best tools of available. Of course, you support your defenders, but you should also be able to defend yourself if push comes to shove. Yeah, there's checks shove. and balances. Like, like just, have, just have some logic in that damn head of yours. And these days, they're like, oh, we don't want you know, Ukrainians getting shot, but at the same time, you know, we should send people to fight the proxy wars in Israel, and yeah. we we need to bomb innocent Syrians, and, you know, let's just send people off to the sandbox just so our, our government idea. can launder money and get more oil, or, or whatever the hell it is, you know, this week. That is what Joe Biden was doing. And, and that's what they support. And it's like you can't protest war and then just be all for, you know, all this other garbage. It's like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> just swear. It's it's the same old, like, hippie, hippie crap from before where they're like, oh, we want peace, we want peace. But also, we're going to totally bend the knee we don't want, to our oppressors. We don't want World War Three, so we're gonna do a proxy war. Exactly. Like, like that's a good excuse? Like, like people are dying. What? 
It would be one thing if Ukraine was like super allied to us and they were like, oh, is that right. and they weren't communists and they were upholding individual rights and blah blah blah. But they weren't terrible to their citizens. <laughs> they're a bad country. Yeah, like they're terrible to their people. Like, I don't really care. It's a hellhole. I mean, if they're innocent people, I care about that. But it's like that's just everywhere. Right. Exactly. You can't. We're not super. We can't like American. no no country can just be world police like, it's sad but it is distinctly not our problem, especially if it means American lives. <sighs> yeah. It's just it's an evil world out there and it's everybody for themselves unfortunately. Yep. Pick up your Bibles and pick up your swords. And kill. And kill <laughs> kill for all you. All right, that's all freedom. the time we have for today. Uh, thank you for watching First Blood with us. Yeah. We'll be back for uh, Spider-Man and... Spider-Man. We'll do... I want we'll do, to see his balls. Um, the next action movie we'll do, I think, is Commando. So stay tuned for that. That's a great one.